1978, when I was in San Francisco, I was a theater and film critic. And I was doing a final farewell profile on a young 28-year-old social worker who had saved my life. And I was at the, I want, it's not the Cafe Brioche in Portsmouth, but it's something much similar to that. It's not the Cafe Florian in Boston. It's on Market Street, and uh, I used to have multiple cafe espressos and get high on that and watch what was going by. And I needed the name of a mountain range. And this man was seated opposite me, and I said, if I wanted a craggy mountain range around here, would I say the Grand Tetons? And he said, no, you'd say the Sierra Nevada. And I said, not Sierra Nevadas. And he said, no, Sierra Nevada. And from that, began a relationship with a man called Robert Michael Dittler um, that will pursue me until the day I die because there isn't any better choice. Uh, he had just finished writing his doctoral thesis in psychology for the University of New Mexico. And the title of his doctoral thesis for the University of New Mexico, which I came to edit down to every last comma, period, slash, question mark, and what each word meant precisely, was called Homo Unus, H-O-M-O, -O, second word, U-N-U-S, and that was as, as low as he could reduce it to exactly what he wanted it to say, which was one mankind. Underneath that was human being slash being human. For those of you who are unacquainted with what the slash means, it means there's nothing in between. Human being, being human, and the the over that homo unus one mankind after years and years and years and years of study he had decided that man had but one alternative and that was to become one man mankind human being being human that what was on the inside of the human being wanted to be able to be expressed on the outside and he defended this, this thesis, oh God, philosophically, uh, sociologically, politically, uh, through every humanistic, behavioral, scientific, uh, discipline that he could, and always very convincingly coming to the same conclusion that each of us is each other. By editing this book, which took me mm, uh, probably three or four months, this thesis, I earned a year's free rent in a storefront apartment in the Haight-Ashbury. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't a bad place to live. I kept asking Robert Michael, why didn't he write this in uh, easier language? This was a tome, and no one was going to read this. Why was he doing this anyway? Uh, and And we would haggle over commas, or over the word ever, or over the word he, she. Um, and he was, 
he was obsessive and and driven in his <laughs> in his drive to have me get what it was that he was expressing and as we continued working and battling intellectually and and sometimes even emotionally uh, with one another I came to realize that the man Robert Michael Dittler trusted and had faith in what he was putting out he was walking the walk and talking the talk and that he saw this is the only solution barring nuclear holocaust for mankind to survive and that what he wanted me to do in effect was to market world peace well he left and went on I added to the book the book was copywritten uh, and he left, and he went his way, and I went mine, and every once in a while I'd bump into him, and he'd show up, and we'd go to the beach, and we'd look at the waves, and we'd talk about poetry and music and the book. And as he was leaving, I had said to him, I said, what am I supposed to do with this theory that you have given me And he said, do whatever you want with it. He said, you can use it in everything that you do for the rest of your life. Where I lived, in the storefront in the Haight-Ashbury, was a very interesting location. Uh, it looked out on a hippie's mural, uh, probably painted during the uh, late 60s, 10 years before I got there. On this, this mound was this, excuse me, black man holding hands with a white man who was holding hands with a woman who were holding hands with children of all colors going down a hill with the, the uh, pyramid, the eye of Egypt, the all-seeing eye up above and rays and sunlight. And I used to stare at my desk from, I used to stare at that from my desk and it was lit at night so for 24 hours a day I, I was just staring at this wonderful mural of world harmony and peace and love um, <laughs> one night about a year after I had first met this guy at the uh, coffee house I was sitting at my desk and it was about 2.30 in the morning. Um, Robert Michael had flown to New York to talk with some marketing men on Madison Avenue. Uh, he continued to uh, meet people and talk with them about his theory each time he met with them. Sometimes he'd have us all to a house to, so that we could all see how we could all eat very well and one plant could water two others. <coughs> and I was sitting wondering how in God's name can one market world peace? And I was staring at the copyright sing, uh, symbol. Robert Michael Dittler had told me that the copyright law was the strongest law that the United States had. And I also knew that if you could write something in a mathematical equation, there was a damn good chance uh, that it was correct or that it could be used like E equals MC square. So I had E equals MC square, which created the, the atomic bomb, the theory of relativity from Einstein. And I had this copyright C within a circle and I said, okay, 
what is it that we're really looking for here? And it kept reducing to one, it kept reducing to God. And so I said, let zero equal God. Okay, and how... A circle. Hmm? A circle. A circle, a zero, a cipher uh, equal God. And how close can can one get to God? That circle, it's 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 there, and you can see it, and still it's it's totally closed. And then I said, let one, is one equal a person. And then let the letter C, because I have learned that just about everything we look at is a symbol. Uh, the letter C. The letter C. Uh, stand for open and caring, as, a as opposed to closed. And then I stole the geometric symbol from E equals MC squared. And I said, that's it. That's how it works. You have one open and caring human being working with another open and caring human, human being, working with another one, working with another one, working with another one, working with another one, until all five plus billion human beings have got it. So that let zero equal God equal one open and caring human being to that person's ability to be open and caring at one time will lead automatically to global peace and love. And I was so overwhelmed <coughs> by what I knew at that moment <laughs> that I did <laughs> the only thing that I could think of to do, and that was to that was to uh, send a telegram to the President of the United States. In 1985, I felt that I could write the book that would explain this. It had begun with a, a book called Please Catch Me When I Fall. That was a book of, of truths, things that I knew that were truths for an adult to read to a child. I was, also, I was also given the opportunity, because my discipline is theater, to teach and direct at the Portsmouth Academy of Performing Arts, which was just starting here in, in Portsmouth. And I had, I had worked this philosophy, oh, in starting uh, the recycling food program, uh, in working with uh, male hustlers and prostitutes and drug addicts. Uh, I had never, however, worked it, worked it in theater, and I began doing what I knew that was correct that wouldn't hurt myself or anyone else, and living this, this philosophy. And when I could, with an individual, I would spend time with them and talk about how the philosophy worked. Particularly in the process of, of creating a theatrical piece, another human being has to go through all kinds of things that the normal human being going through to become a doctor or an attorney or uh, a school teacher doesn't have to go through. Uh, they, the person has to begin with the instrument that that one has and transform that instrument into another human being and there are very definite techniques for accomplishing this which work. Key among them is relaxation. Another key uh, to making anything work is ensemble or weenus uh, that no one 
is any better than any other one that in fact no matter whom I'm viewing is the same as myself and yet somehow different like snowflakes that wherever that person has been I have been there to some degree or another probably more than once uh, that was another uh, technique to relax and to identify and to realize that each of us was each other also it's a part of the actor's craft to get through ego uh, actors, writers, artists like Drew Chichester uh, and Carrie Wendell we know that when we get through our ego that what we're really putting out is art and that the ego even though we always have it uh, even though it's why I'm wearing red and Edward's wearing blue and why uh, William's wearing yellow why some of us have beards and some of us have ponytails and some of us have no hair at all you know, that's, that's a, an expression of my snowflake-ness there were two other things that kept coming up from Robert Michael Ditler's book which had somewhat been used in the in the, uh, in the study of theater and acting one was meditation and the other was imaging uh, meditation is as old, almost as old as, as we know mankind to be it has been very formalized in India uh, through the Hindu philosophy particularly the Siddha branch which dates back 9,000 years and has a recorded history of 3,000 years meditation means taking oneself from wherever one is into a point of spiritual peace and at oneness with everything the most the most common way to achieve this is through the use of a mantra this stills the troubled mind it stills the roof chatter that's going on. Okay, so in my in my teaching of acting students and directing students, I now incorporated a regular meditation for each rehearsal and prior to each class. The other thing, another thing that's found in the technique or craft of acting. Um,
teaching assignment was complete. My agreement with the Bow Street Theatre Portsmouth Academy of Performing Arts. And with uh, four friends and students, uh, Jennifer Burkett Brown, uh, Scott Landis Murphy, Edward Michael Stevens, and Gregory Andrew Chavskowski, we decided that we would put this into book form. Our bibliography for the book that uh, we were putting together encompassed just about every discipline <laughs> known to mankind. Uh, photography, quantum physics, education, history, uh, theater, uh, paganism, uh, metaphysics, biomechanics, uh, you name it. And this group had been into it surfing, <laughs> astronomy, astrology. Uh, we had been into it and around it and through it. And uh, we knew that, that we had something. The title of the book is Be Quantum Now. How to have in loveness for oneself and all others and save planet Earth at the same time. Uh, and it will be copyright. It's in the process of being copywritten now. I, I think what I'd like to do is to give you the table of contents very quickly. Um, within that is a whole context and concept of the book and how it works. And what we have all experienced as experimenters, teachers, uh, students of this way of life uh, is that these are the things that are needed to make it work so that you begin opening up to the real full, free, happy uh, human being um, that it was intended you should be. There's an introduction where uh, the reader is told to forgive his parents, her parents, himself or herself, and then uh, all others for errors and the incorrectness of the ways in the past. The first chapter proves definitely that each human being is totally within God. God being the unknown quality, the source or the creator, whatever that source may be. Um, not one of us, as of yet, has uh, complete, all the complete and all the correct knowledge about everything. Okay, the second, with the acceptance of that, with the awareness of that, that one is totally within God. The, the Egyptians saw the sun as God, and in truth, for this planet, the sun is the provider and sustainer of life here, can also be the destroyer. Um, and we know through quantum physics that we go beyond that, and beyond that, and beyond that. And that is what God is, what we do not know. The second, the second chapter is relax, relax, relax. Um, everything, 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 everything is 
done better when one can relax. And the next thing is meditate and use your positive imagination. Uh, positive imagination. We have a cat that wants to get in out there. Okay, now here's the number four thing that you do, which not too many people know. It's called japa, japa baby. Okay, japa means that you keep repeating your action or your mantra over and over and over to yourself. Uh, there's a little story about the little engine that could, uh, and he was going up a mountain with this long line of trains behind him, and it was a great big steep mountain, and he didn't think he was going to make it, but he kept saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And that positive uh, push of himself, assertion of himself, being able to cut him over the mountain. Uh, actors know this when they're going into a scene to get themselves psyched up. They'll say, I'm really angry, 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 I'm really angry. And the repetition of the mantra, will, uh, which is called Japa, J-A-P-P-A, assists you in doing that. You can say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm worth it, I'm worth it, I'm worth it, I'm worth it. Um, whatever it is that's working for you at the time, uh, in a positive sense, that will keep you going through whatever it is that has been holding you back in the past. The, the chapter five is fulfill your needs and then give the rest away. Your needs. You're the only, you are the only one who can decide what your needs are. Uh, and then give the rest away. And there's a marvelous book called The Seven Laws of Money. Uh, one realizes upon reading that that one is money, that money is only a symbol, that money has its own rules, that in fact you can give nothing away. Whatever you give away keeps coming back to you. Uh, the other one, chapter six, is to expect look for and see miracles. Uh, until you know that there are no accidents and that there are really miracle after miracle after miracle, you, you will not see the miracles. You will only see the accidents and the mistakes when in fact one knows that there are no accidents and there are no mistakes. Uh, don't want too much or you may become needy again. Throughout the book, throughout the research that has gone into the book uh, and the experimentation, the one thing, the one most, it's common to us all, and it's the cause of more harm than any other aspect of the human nature, and that's greed. Uh, our needs are simple. We need to be warm. We need to be fed. Uh, we need water to drink. We need clothes to wear. We need something to do. Uh, and we know, need also to know that we are loved and that we love. So our needs are very simple. Our wants are Leviathan. Uh, don't be greedy. No means no sometimes. Uh, the same thing about wanting too much. Don't be greedy. When, when you tune in to the eternal now, how you are totally within God, the universe wants to say yes to you. Sometimes it will say no. And it will only say no because it is not your time to be told yes. <laughs> that sounds really silly, and it's really correct. When you come up against something and it's no, and you go off and you try to do it another way and it's no, and you go off and you try to do it another way and it's no, it's no. Very often someone says no, someone else says yes. Okay, but when it keeps coming up, no, it's not supposed to be, it's not your time to have it happening to you. 
the spirit. The spirit cannot eat the body is the next chapter. You cannot become too spiritual. The limits to one's spirituality have not yet been determined. Uh, people have been seen to levitate. Uh, enormous physical manifestations and and miracles and uh, celestial happenings and all kinds of things have been attributed to uh, powers in the spirit. But the spirit cannot hurt the body. We don't know. There is no limit. So the more the spirit is there, the the more fun it is. Always choose what is correct for you. What is correct for me may not be correct for you. I shouldn't expect that it would be correct for you unless you decided that it was correct for you. Uh, and vice versa. Here's a real big one. If the answer to this is, is uh, always yes, it's fat city. Do not hurt yourself or others. Uh, and sometimes it's necessary to experience pain and sometimes it's necessary to inflict pain, although I, I hate myself for saying that. What is, is illusion or maya. We live in an illusion. No one knows what the reality is. If we could see the color beyond purple, we would be dazzled. Uh, why do we keep doing this? Because there's more and it gets better. The next chapter, your life is God's gift. Be art. The final chapter, got it? Good. Repeat and repeat etc. and find better ways. Uh, and that's that's the essence of the book. Uh, and that's pretty much the way that it's going to be. Everything everything always begins and ends with you. Within this book, one of the things that we've done very, very cleverly is we have addressed the reader as you. And we have talked about our own experiences as we, and we have included the reader with us. Um, and what one, it all comes back to that, you know, that you choose, you create, you decide, you are the creator within the creator. It's, it's always you, it's always number one. Uh, it, always, it always begins and ends there. And in order to, to do that, you've got to begin saying yes to yourself. You have, instead of where there has been a negative in your life, I have what uh, many people would call disabilities, or this very left-handedness being one of them, you know, uh, dyslexia being another one. Um, anyhow, uh, for the most part, a person who has a disability can learn to, to turn that into an ability, if that makes sense to you, right? So that where, wherever, and you've got to have a total in-loveness for yourself, beyond which most people have yet experienced you know, to, to be putting up those affirmations on the mirror that say, sweetheart, you're the best looking face in town. Uh, as ridiculous as they, they seem, you know, or, or standing naked in front of a mirror and comparing yourself with uh, the centerfold and saying, Jesus, you know, uh, he may be the centerfold. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not too bad. You know, we keep allowing other people's impositions, very often lies and disempowerments, to stand in front of and stop us from who each of us is. And that is just an incredible creature with a potential that hasn't begun to be realized. In conclusion, let me read you the last uh, two chapters. They're, they're pretty short. Chapter 14. Your life is God's gift. Be art. <laughs> um, one of his Tahitian paintings, Paul Gauguin, the French post-impressionist, wrote, 
Where did we come from? Where are we? Where are we going? Age-old questions without answers. God only knows. That's definitely the greatest truth. We know we exist. Daily we learn more about what we humans are. At the turn of the century, all medical knowledge was contained in a single volume. Eighty-nine years later, what we know medically fills whole libraries. Humanity, like it or not, is advancing at an incredible pace, and you with it. Historically, artists have been valued for the unique perceptions of life, for their unique perceptions of life. Artists portray more than what is. Their works contain aspects of themselves, self-expression. As you begin to open up to yourself, to expand the, the vision and image of yourself beyond the limits that have been told to you about you or society's impositions upon you or what you thought you were expected to be, you'll naturally begin to realize what a wonderful and magnificent creature you are. Discard all the rest. As you walk through those unnatural and irrational fears that have been holding you chained, you will experience new joys and psychic powers you didn't know you possessed. You will realize that in truth, you are more a part of humankind's solution than you thought possible. You'll become a prototype of the human potential. Your energy and creativity will surpass anything you have ever experienced. You'll find ways to overcome personal obstacles which you thought were impossible. And you are really cautioned. Over and over and over I see this repeated. You are really cautioned to make certain you get the proper nutrition and rest your body requires to sustain itself. Periodically, you'll have to pinch yourself to ascertain that you are real. You are. You will not go insane, though others as yet unaware of how strong self-in-loveness is will definitely wonder and question the new you. You'll continue to affirm your positive existence rather than negate it as you might have done in the past. Edward M. Stevens, one of the authors, a theater person, often says, be art. As you learn and continue to create yourself by your own fine and self-disciplined standards, you, your life, and personal surroundings will become expressions of your art. We know life is God's gift whatever God is. We know you always choose and decide according to your past experiences. As you forgive your parents, yourself, and others for past errors and begin to experience the miracle that you are and choose, as you're naturally programmed to do, what is best for you with correct knowledge, the world and humanity will begin saying yes to you. Each in his, her own way is an artist of sorts. We are all actors in this game of life, and as Keats once said, or was it Shelley, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. You are both your creator on earth and your beholder. You have now and eternity, and only God knows who you really are. Who could ask for anything more? Physician, heal thyself. Be well, be art, be good, be fun, be fine, be correct, be all that you can be, etc. Finally, thank God. Got it? Good. Repeat and repeat, etc. And find better ways. The concept of in loveness for oneself is a relatively new one. It's practically brand new. Love has been around as long as man has been able to express it. It is a mammalian thing necessary for the procreation and survival of a species. The emotions, not thought, govern love. We have so many different kinds of love, motherly, fatherly, brotherly, sisterly, friendly, 
etc., sometimes they can become smotherly and be imposed where they are not needed or wanted, creating dependencies and resentments. Many crimes have been committed historically in the name of love. A crime in the name of love is not love, nor was it. Love is a positive, a giving reality which seeks and responds to itself. To be fully alive, to be fully human, to live freely and happily on God's planet Earth, one must have in loveness for self in order to begin. How to get and be that has been the sole purpose of this book. Get by yourself. Use your favorite name for yourself, a childhood name, which someone whom you know loved you is a good device to call yourself by a childhood name. It automatically puts you in touch with the natural child, the source of all your creativity that dwells within you. Whatever name you choose for yourself, begin a forgiving dialogue with yourself and all those memories, good and especially bad, which dwell within you. According to the numbers and intensity of your victimization and battering, you must forgive and forgive. Forgiving is the beginning key to in loveness for self and others and is a lifelong process. It is also the beginning of exposing and becoming intimate with the real you. Deny nothing. Be open and vulnerable to yourself. At first it may be difficult and painful, but as you surrender to and accept the pain that was in the realization that each and all of us has been doing the very best we knew with incomplete and incorrect knowledge, the pain will diminish and be replaced by a new joy. Begin with your parents, whom you know loved you. When you can't face something, leave and go on to something else, or do something else altogether. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you have the rest of your lifetime. It's okay, and often self-healing, just to waste time sometimes, just hang out, as the young people say. Trust in God, the source of your creation, that will naturally put you onto a correct path. Whatever God is, is the ultimate and seemingly infinite and eternal truth. Via con Dios, go with God, is not a wish. It's a definite, will it or not. You are there, totally within God. When there are enemies to this concept, they are negatives, especially stress, pressure, greed, selfishness, excluding others for self-gain at others' expense, denial, power playing, etc. They have been discussed within this text ad nauseum. For your own goodness, avoid them. Stay relaxed. When you feel stress and tension building, drop out, if only in your own mind. Stress kills correctness and good things. It is bad for you and to you and others. Meditate on things you love, would love to be or have. Choose mantras that will quiet your racing mind and repeat them until you experience their rewards in a stillness within. When you speak aloud, you vibrate. When you chant or sing, you are a veritable bell. Speaking and singing are good for you, your soul, and others. Whatever you need is close at hand. Think. Go into your intellectual center and filter its responses through your heart center of in loveness to find a truth for you that works. You have always many positive choices. Trust God and yourself. You'll make the best one for yourself always. Share what you have whenever and however you can. Put some checks and balances on yourself. Save something for a rainy day. Your needs are simple and few. Your wants are mammoth and can devour you if you allow it. Not God, not the universe, not planet Earth, but yourself and others will say no to you on occasion. Allow that to be so. What it is you are seeking will come to you when you are truly ready. There are no accidents, many miracles. Don't push or struggle. Bend like the willow. 
Compromise is not always incorrect. Keep checking your life and taking stock or inventory to be certain you are not hurting yourself or others. If you are, you know you will pay the consequences eventually. That is Solomon's wisdom, a universal truth. Naturally, you choose what is best for you. When it is at the expense of others, it is not best for you, and you are responsible. Pray to replace old, ignorant, bad habits with good ones. You will. Over and over and round and round we go where we stop. Nobody knows. Only God knows. We, the authors, have much in loveness for you. We are one with you and travel with you too as we all search for better ways. Thank you, Om, the end. Or, as renowned Kittery Point, Maine boat builder Bill Bailey says, what a wonderful place to begin. Adieu. What a wonderful place to begin. Adieu. Setu. together here.